Welcome to this week's edition of On The Fly. I'm your host, Gene DiFilippo, and our guest this week is the very successful Director of Athletics at Butler University, Barry Collier. Barry, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Gene. My pleasure to be with you. Well, Barry, um, you and I came up in a different way than most athletic directors today. A lot of the athletic directors come up, they played high school sports, they probably didn't participate um, in collegiate athletics, they go on and get a master's degree and uh, work their way up that way. Tell us your story and your journey from the time that you graduated from Butler uh, as captain of the basketball team. Well, Gene, I had uh, in my time at Butler, um, I had decided uh, really after arriving at Butler that I would, I wanted to be in uh, education and be in sports. And so I switched my major at that, uh, while I was here from uh, business into education um, and planned to be, a, to be a teacher and a coach and be involved in with young people and sport and education. And so when I finished uh, my degree here at Butler, I, um, uh, I was ready to take on the world and be the next uh, John Wooden, probably in junior high, if that's what opportunity <laughs> I got, but, um, or elementary even. Uh, but, I, but instead, I, I, I was fortunate to have a, a former coach of mine in a junior college by the name of Stan Evans who was an assistant coach at nearby, relatively nearby, Indiana State University. Uh, he had become an assistant basketball coach there and he, he uh, made me aware of a graduate assistant position. Uh, so I went to Indiana State to, to grad school and, and was, a, was one of uh, four graduate assistants uh, with the basketball program, not the main one. Uh, and luck would, ha luck would uh, touch me again when I got an opportunity that year uh, to move from that staff to be the assistant volunteer assistant coach and the only assistant coach at Rose Holman uh, in, in also in Terre Haute, Indiana. And so I got great experience that that year from a, a, a leader of the program there, an athletic director and basketball coach, John Muchner. And then I finished my master's degree and was ready to take on the world and be the next John Wooden in junior high or wherever that was going to be. And I uh, uh, made a decision with my, my wife uh, to move to the Seattle, Washington area. And after moving there, I was able to uh, interview and become an assistant coach in junior college at the at Seattle Central Community College. And I would suggest that being an assistant coach in junior college is one of the finest witness protection programs in America. <laughs> Nobody knows who you are, right? I mean, you talk about obscurity. That's a pretty obscure position to be in, but it was great. Uh, uh, Al Harrison was our head coach and the experience was really good. It was just a year long, but then through meeting people and trying to work my way into um, uh, a coaching situation and a more full-time because that was not I worked by the way I, I worked selling uh, programs at the horse racing track in uh, Seattle and also worked as a substitute teacher and also worked as a, um, a campaign uh, assistant to a political campaign and worked as a uh, on a special project for the junior college all of which were part-time work that I found in order to, to, to be in coaching. And then the next year I got a break in to division one. I, I went to university of Idaho and worked for Don Munson, who was fan is fantastic, was fantastic. Um, and made, uh, some really good, um, uh, relationships there was there for five years. Uh, then he, um, uh, our program was really good. He's really good. Was a really good coach. And he got the job at the University of Oregon, and I followed him there as an assistant coach after not getting the head coaching job at Idaho, and was with him for three more years there at, at Oregon, so a total of eight years with Don Munson, before I left to go be an assistant coach at Stanford University with Mike Montgomery. And from there, uh, uh, in 1989, the Butler 
university basketball job opened, my school's uh, basketball job opened, and I interviewed and fooled them and was hired as the basketball coach in 89 for 11 years before going to Nebraska, uh, working for Bill Byrne for, for uh, being hired by Bill Byrne and worked at Nebraska for six years, three of which he was there. In 2006, came back to Butler University as the athletic director when this job opened and have been here for the last 16 years. So that's my track record. I'm so fortunate to have had so many people that helped me along the way um, and, um, and taught me, you know, really what's important and how to, to, to get there. And I do think that um, having all those experiences have helped me be um, a better athletic director than I would have been without those experiences. Yeah, I think it's very difficult to evaluate coaches when you haven't been one. Uh, you and I both know what it's like for your team to have a great week of practice. You're excited about the game on Saturday, and all of a sudden your team goes out there and lays an egg, and you have no reason why, uh, And but it happens, and it happens to all of us in coaching, and I think if you played the game and you've coached the game, you understand some of those things and can be a little bit more helpful to the coach. Would you agree with that? Well, I do think it's uh, it's very important to have uh, the, the background, uh, very helpful to have the background of a coach in order to effectively evaluate a coach as an athletic director. Um, the ups and downs that come with coaching a team and all of the personalities and the human beings that are involved in an org in a, in a program, in a team that you're trying to get all on the same page and operate at a high level at the same time on game night or in competition, when the other team is trying to do exactly the same thing, and there's only going to be one winner. So, you know, there are many things that are largely out of your control. Um, but you keep working toward, you know, improving that. And as, as an athletic director, I really do believe it's helpful. It's probably not mandatory. I don't think that that's, you know, you have to have coached uh, or even coached a, a specific sport, but it, it is helpful because you, you can't really understand the, the position that a coach is in and fully or as fully anyway, unless you've been there. Right. You mentioned before when you and I have spoken, about surrounding the coach and giving the coach the things that are necessary to win. Um, let's take Butler um, and the success that you've had at Butler. And, and I might just add, uh, you were instrumental in turning this Butler program around. You were 6-22 and 22 your first year and then 11-17 and 16-13, somewhere along the road. But your last five years at Butler, you were 19-8. and eight. 23 and 10, 22 and 11, 22 and 10, and 23 and 8. What a great job you did in turning that Butler program around. Uh, but I want to I want to ask you that Butler probably doesn't have all of the all of the surrounding uh, things that a UCLA or a Kentucky or a Duke have. How is it that your basketball program has has done such a great job and gone to the championship game two years in a row. Well, I think there are a number of uh, items that are really critical to success in an athletics program. Um, the The number one uh, factor, I think, is a is a quality head coach. Uh, it's not enough. But you really have to have a, a, one who has a lot of different skills um, and is able to uh, be a great communicator, have a high level of uh, work ethic, and, and also is, is one that has uh, the, the level of intelligence and, and not just IQ, but Emotional intelligence as well. I think that's really important in reading people and being somebody that can connect with uh, young people. 
Uh, you also need the relative experience. You don't need the most experience, but you need relatively important and relatable experience uh, to, to be successful. Um, and I think that, you know, that, that there are probably even many more things, but uh, those pieces are really, really important. And, um, and they don't, you don't even get the first base as far as I'm concerned if you don't have the integrity uh, to do the right thing and to be uh, a, a person that cares about it, the, the responsibilities to the young people that you're, you're coaching. Um, so you would start with integrity and then have those other four areas and you can overcome a lot because you're going to learn and you're going to, you know, learn from failure and you're going to hopefully learn from success that, you know, you're, it's not just the fact that you're wonderful. You've done some things to do, to be successful and, and all the people that go into it. So um, I think a lot of that has can be summed up by saying that's a kind of a culture thing, the way that you work and the way that the importance that you put on communication and um, having the, the, the work ethic um, and, and the integrity. Uh, I think that, that culture is, is huge and I'm not new to that, um, arriving at that, uh, position, but, uh, and much less the only one that believes that, but I think all of that uh, is put into place. And one thing that you mentioned, uh, Gene was that, uh, that, you know, I had success as the basketball coach, um, later in my career, as opposed to early in my time as the basketball coach at Butler, I do think it takes time. I really do think it, you have to be more patient than less patient and we're all less patient than we used to be. Uh, yes, probably very true. true. Um, uh, but um, you, you, you know, you're going to have to make some some uh, tough decisions along the way, and you really need to stick to the the values that you have, um, and surround yourself with really good people. Um, I was largely successful because I had really good people around me. It's really important to have uh, good people around you. Uh, in your organization and in college athletics, this would be the coaching staff and the student athletes and the support staff around both of those groups. Um, there's no two ways about it. The, the people do make all the difference. They sure do. Hey, let's talk about your arena for a minute. One of my favorite movies of all time is Hoosiers. And I was so excited the first time I went into your arena. It's got to be a plus for you, isn't it? Uh, it really is. Um, you know, I don't think any one place is everything to everybody. Um, but I, when you walk into Hinkle Fieldhouse, if you don't feel basketball has been played there and is special, um, then then it's probably not the place for you, right? If you don't you don't appreciate all that's happened in a, a national historic landmark for one thing, right? It hasn't, it didn't start out that way, but it's was the first of its kind back in the twenties when it was built. You know, we're not terribly far away from its hundredth anniversary, um, but it is really, it just feels like it to me. And it, it and it is unique in that the, the clear story windows and the sun shining through uh, not in your eyes as a player, but through the, you know, through the windows on a Saturday afternoon, that's special. Um, you know, basketball in Indiana has been a, a, a real staple in our society here. And so it fits in that way. And it's been the home of many great basketball e events. So it is, it is really neat. And uh, Brad Stevens, who was our coach in the, um, from about 2000, uh, seven, eight to, uh, 2013, uh, men said that, uh, not every recruit will, will identify with Hinkle Fieldhouse, but we want those people that do, we right. want those recruits that do. And that's a pretty smart statement about just playing to your strengths. And I want to compliment you and you have done a terrific job in updating Hinkle Arena, but making the new look old and keeping the, the, the history and tradition of that great arena. So congratulations to you there. 
Barry, let's go on another topic. Um, there's so many young people out there that are listening in. What advice would you give to a young Barry Collier on the way up, whether it be in coaching or administration or whatever? Um, I would say, you know, one of the great lessons I learned uh, along the way and applied it was to, to be um, committed to um, what's most important to you. You know, obviously to me anyway, that's our, our families and our value and our faith and our, you know, our duty uh, to, to, um, and responsibilities. Um, but ultimately you, you want to be around people that believe the same thing and try to teach the young people, those, you know, positives and so forth. Um, but I, but I also think that there's a, the level of persistence, um, and that is necessary to be successful in athletics and college athletics in particular, because you, you better be persistent if you're going to try to recruit successfully and you better be persistent if you're going to, um, generate revenue, sell tickets and get donors, uh, to, to come alongside you and, um, uh, uh, meet the needs of sponsors and and all of the uh, those things and you better be persistent and consistent with your your values educationally for your students and holding them to a standard that uh, will help them reach their goals academically and as growth as a young person and but you have to have all of those things and I I mentioned persistence a couple of different times and I would share with the audience that um, when I applied to be the basketball coach at Butler, um, I had a, a challenge in that I was in, I was working as an assistant coach at Stanford University in California and trying to communicate pre-text messaging, pre-internet, uh, pre all of this. Um, and I had a good old fashioned telephone to call and try to and send letters through snail mail uh, to try to get um, an opportunity to interview. I wasn't sure I was going to get an interview. There was um, involvement from Coach Knight. Bob Knight was recommending one of his uh, assistant coaches. Gene Cady was recommending one of his assistant coaches. Donnie Walsh, the GM for the Indiana Pacers, was recommending uh, uh, a former pay Pacer uh, and a assistant coach. And I'm out here on the left coast in California trying to connect with a president that I didn't know at the time. And that's who was making the decision, but I did find that out. And so I was calling, I called and called back a few days later, left a message with the secretary. He was as nice as could be called back a few days later and no, no return. And I started calling every day. And then one day I said to myself, I'm going to get through today. And I called six times that day. <laughs> And each That's time persistence. I called, I left the message to please call back. I was interested in the job and she was nice as could be. But on the sixth time that I called that day, she said, hold on just a minute. And so I'm imagining that she put the phone down and walked back to President uh, Bannister and said, would you please talk to this guy and get him off of my phone because he <laughs> stopped calling. And so she came back and picked up the phone and said, I'll put you through to President uh, Bannister now. And I thought my eyes lit up and I thought, oh, well, here we go. I got my 90 second uh, elevator speech ready to roll and and here it comes. So he answered, he got connected and he said, hello, Barry, this is Jeff Bannister. We're going to bring you in for an interview. We'll call you back with the details. Click. Um, and so I didn't get to present what I had on that phone call, but I did come on the interview and and uh, you know, prepared for that uh, with a with a a document that I shared with them so that they would have something to remember me by. And because you're an assistant coach, you don't have a track record, right? Um, right? So I think that those. My bottom line is, I think I really wanted to be the basketball coach at Butler. I think that was kind of obvious. Um, and I, but I shared that by staying after it until I was going to get an answer. And the answer could have been stop calling. We're not interested in you. But I do think that, that that's one thing that, you know, you can't accept 
no is only no right now. It's in my book anyway, and you have to keep working at it and be persistent. And I think that that's, you know, that six and 22 year that you mentioned my first year as the head coach at Butler, I was a lousy coach, um, but I didn't stop. I didn't give up. And uh, we kept building and building and building. And then finally at the end, we were going to the NCAA tournament and, and we had even better coaches after me who led us to victories in the, in those, in the basket, in the NCAA tournament, including Brad Stevens, who got all the way to the final game twice. So it can be done. You just have to, I think persistence is pretty important. Uh, well said. That's truly really said. Well said. Now, I'm not going to um, ask you exactly how many pages you'd prepared, but the rumor is that you it was over 50 pages in the report that you <laughs> gave to uh, the president of Butler. Is that true? Um, no, it wasn't over 50 pages. It has grown though. The rumor, you know how rumors work, right? There's, there's, it's grown over time, but it was, it was 35 pages. You know, it was, it was, uh, maybe 12 different subjects and, uh, maybe 15 different subjects, everything from recruiting to training to promotions and facilities and practice time and practice organization and, a to Z, as much as I could, uh, I would want them to know, right? This is what you're, this is what you're going to get if you hire me. That's what I was trying to leave behind. Great, great story. Great story. All right. On another note, a Butler fan, someone in Indianapolis, what would make um, them want to follow um, Butler University, your respective organization, and why should they follow? And what is what do you uh, determine on will be your growth, and in what areas would you grow? Well, I think that they would uh, they would follow our program and and hopefully support our program on one of many levels or may, maybe all of these levels because we have some people doing that but both from a from a positive word of mouth where they believe that we're doing things that are good and I'll get into that in a minute but but to coming to a to uh, uh, one of our events contests to um, supporting us as a donor to being a sponsor or that type of thing. And the reason I think they would do that is because uh, we're committed to doing things the right way. We're not perfect. We don't, and, and by the way, I don't think we're trying to do things drastically different than other people. We just believe in what we believe in and that's what we're going to do. And, you know, sometimes we have to make tough decisions, but for the most part, we're going to, um, we're, we're, we are absolutely 100% committed to sticking to our to our uh, values and and delivering on the the proposition of using athletic education, accomplishing education through athletics effectively, um, and being a program that our school could be proud of and and a, a conduit to for people to connect to to Butler University. So all of that is important, um, and I think that the quality of people that we have, uh, the student athletes and the coaches, our support staff, who don't really get much recognition from time, you know, most of the time, these are really hardworking, good people who's, who make a great team. And so, uh, you know, we're a relatively small university. We, we have less than 4,500 undergraduate students and less than or about 50,000 alumni. And that, that compares with 50,000 students at many schools in our region in the Midwest and four or 500,000 alumni. And so we're a little bit of the, the engine that could, but we don't play every sport and on every level that everybody does. Um, I just think that there's a lot that goes into that. We have a fantastic facility in Hinkle Fieldhouse. We've got lots of really, really good people. Um, we're, we're on the same page from an administrative standpoint of the board of trustees to the university administration 
but down through the athletic department and the coaching staff and so forth. I think there's a lot of positives there. Um, and, and it's a challenge. I mean, the challenge is we're the smaller school and we're trying to compete at a very high level. Uh, we compete successfully in, in a numerous sports, but we do have 20 sports and we're not as successful as we'd like to be in all of them. Certainly not all the time, but, um, but we think we've contributed to Butler's success and, um, and, and done a, a good job there. And we want to keep doing that. Well, we're out of time on this week's On the Fly. I'm your host, Gene DiFilippo, and I want to thank Barry Collier for being our guest this week. And most of all, I want to thank the listeners out there. Thanks for your time this time, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.